this morning. <laughs> so I figured I would uh, start off with. Um, During a Sunday school lesson, a child learned about how God created human beings. The child became especially focused when the teacher explained how Eve was created from Adam's ribs. Later in the week, the boy's mother saw him lying down on the floor, so she asked him what was wrong. His reply was priceless. Mom, I have a pain in my side. I think I'm getting a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I've been feeling that same thing. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, well, today I'm going to be teaching on patience. Um, and it's good that nobody's gotten up and already walked out yet, so that's pretty good. That is good. Uh, Amen. <laughs> yes. um, but anyways, um, I'd like to start off with uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 16. Everybody would turn on your Bibles. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16. It says, But I received mercy for this reason, so that in me the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. You know, my personality and patience have a very hard time understanding one another. And I feel like that can be the same for all of us. I mean, look at our lifestyle culture. Uh, we live in a day of instant cereal, instant coffee, instant credit. Amazon Prime, instant pain relief, instant teeth whiteners, I mean, so on and so forth. Just a whole lot of fast and convenient and, and nothing really lasting very long. Um, you know, we, we want instant relief from pain and problems, uh, like the name it and claim it theology in a way. Um, we, uh, as Christians, we often um, struggle spiritually as well. We want instant spiritual maturity to teach before adequate learning. We want instant spiritual authority over those who bind and loose and command and confess in the name of the Lord without really knowing what that means. We want instant results from ministry, from those who keep starting and stopping ministries, to those who jump around or move from place to place when things aren't happening as fast as they want. Unfortunately, we jump the gun on discontent and fail to understand how good we actually have it because our patience ran out too soon. In these moments when people are slow to understand his sovereign nat the sovereign nature of God, um, this story I found, I think, is a great example to put into perspective um, kind of what I'm saying, kind of everything that I'm saying right here about our patience maybe running out too soon and, and failing to get what the Lord is trying to give us. Um, once upon a time, there was a man who lived with his wife, two small children, and his elderly parents in a tiny hut. He tried to be patient and gracious, but the noise and crowded conditions wore him down. In desperation, he consulted the village wise man. Do you have a rooster? asked the wise man. Yes, he replied. Keep the rooster in the hut with your family and come see me again next week. The man returned the next week and told the wise elder that living conditions were worse than ever, with the rooster crowing and making a mess of the hut. Do you have a cow? asked the wise man. The man nodded fearfully. Take your cow into the hut as well and come see me in a week. Over the next couple of weeks, the man, on the advice of the elder, made room for a goat, two dogs, and his brother's children. Finally, he could take no more and in a fit of anger, kicked all the animals and guests out, leaving only his wife, his children, and his parents. The home suddenly became spacious and quiet, and everyone lived happily ever after. <laughs> it was pretty good because, you know, he, it was amazing how he thought that what he had was bad. And then, you know, the wise elder just showed him it could be so much worse. And, and that's where, you know, we have to be, we have to be pretty uh, content with it. God has us where he wants us to be, so we need to be patient and, and let him do with us as he wants. Um, Um, a problem, I got a little off track over here, I knew that wasn't right, <laughs> anyways, without patience it can be easy to miss out on God's opportunities in our lives. Patience is love's stabilizer and a tool to combat daily life's problems. 
It's also a tool to combat daily life's battles and witness to unbelievers. In reality, many times we need to be quick to listen and slow to speak. I have a pretty difficult time with that one. <laughs> um, we need to allow the Lord to speak through us and not miss out on the opportunity because we can't be patient and listen to God. Being patient when ministering to others and listening to the Holy Spirit allows Him to be in control. You know, it's kind of like that old saying, um, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Um, you know, it's like you can tell the Lord, you know, I'm going to lead this horse, you know, to water, but, and, or, you know, I'm going to lead this person to, to you, you know, and, I'm, and I want you to be in complete control, but I want you to do it in this amount of time, you know, and, and if you take too long, then I'm going to try to figure out how to break that saying. You know, I'm going to try to make that horse drink myself or that person come to Christ myself. And usually whenever we do that, we just push them away. Um, because we can't give God a timeline. God doesn't work off of our timeline. Um, anyways, um, God is not con slow concerning His promises. From His vantage point, He is not slow. God's slowness is merely His grace at work with sinners. Maybe he has not acted yet, but that doesn't mean he won't. It just hasn't happened yet. Why does God endure the race with patience? Well, because it means salvation for the lost. Many more can have an eternal relationship with the Father. Um, and, and because many more can have an eternal relationship with the Father. God never waits too long on, il on any element of his will for us. Remember that next time you think that he made a mistake or that he's forgotten about you. The Lord is always orchestrating elements of our purpose when there are delays. Even when those delays are caused by our own flesh interferences. Um, I believe that this is, the meaning in whenever, this is part of the meaning whenever he's talking in Romans 8 verses 28. Uh, whenever he says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You know, we, we just need to plant, a, plant the seed and let God use us as a vessel as he sees fit when we are called to do so in, in our daily lives. We need to study and stay rooted in the word and to learn how to bring people to Christ and understand God's truth. Patience is one of those virtues that we all strive to maintain in our everyday lives, but sometimes our self-control wanes and impatience settles in. Whether we are dealing with a problem at work or home, it can be hard to reclaim that sense of patience um, after a particular situation that draws the last straw. Um, <laughs> that's where our daily prayer and trust in the Lord can come in to help you find patience again. Um, if everybody will turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. I'm about to hit y'all with a barrage of verses, so I hope y'all are ready to get your fingers wet. Um, Colossians uh, 1, verses 9 through 11 says... For this reason also, since the day we heard this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience joyfully. Um, you know, we, um, and, um, you know, God, um, God is always going to be there, um, for us whenever, even whenever things are bad, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's easy for us to, um, you know, I have problems all the time at work and I just, you know, it's so easy to get frustrated and to, well, lose your patience. You know, it's just that's why it's the fruit of the spirit. Is, is you can lose it and pretty easy. But you know, the Lord has has given us all the tools to be able to learn how to regain it and to work on on that. And um, another thing is, you know, we can't. And um, well, 
let's just turn to, Ch to Acts 20, verses 28 through 30 real fast. Uh, chapter 20, verses 28 through 30 says, Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Men will rise up, even from your own number, and distort the truth to lure the disciples into following them. Um, in 31 it says, Therefore be on the alert, remembering that night and day for three years I have never stopped warning each each one of you with tears. Um, you know, correct and sound doctrine is crucial to our salvation. Um, and and growth in spiritual, for, in spiritual maturity. It comes as no surprise that God warns us many times throughout the Bible to beware of false teaching. Um, in order to know when they are, be in order for us to know whenever we're being led down the wrong path that God did not intend for us, um, you know, I've there's a lot of different things that whenever we're dealing with new Christians, it's kind of a, a really it can be a slow process, but also it's uh, kind of like you know whenever you start in preschool and you go on all the way up till you graduate, and things get harder as you progress. You know, you start off with stuff that's very simple, and um, and then you work your way up. Because if we started off with something confusing, or, and, and the things also have to be explained to us very well whenever we're young, because otherwise we don't really understand the true point or the real meaning of, of what the person is trying to get at. And so, you know, like an example would be like um, saying, you know, oh, come to church and your life will instantly get easier. You know, <laughs> that's, that's probably, I mean... It's not. It might not get easier, but it will get better. But um, you know, and one of those um, in the worldly sense, that can act, it can actually almost get get worse in a way because you know that's the time whenever the enemy can attack the hardest is whenever we first start wanting to give our life to God and we first start wanting to come to Him and we're still young and we're still immature in the Word. That's whenever sometimes the the, the, the ultimate deceptor will come in and try to try to steer us away from the from the will of God. Um, but uh, anyways, um, like that as a farmer, I call it kind of that's the time whenever the hell storm is going to come on the ceiling, and we'll see which one has the most vigor, you know. So um, in chapter one, and, and I mean sorry, in First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen. in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who, do, who does the will of God remains forever. You know, that's why it's very important that whenever we pray, that we're praying for God's will to be done and not ours. Um... You know, God, God wants us to come to Him with everything, obviously, um, because He wants a personal relationship with us. Um, but we need to be, but we also need to be praying for the will of God um, in our lives, and and not so much worldly things. You know, I mean, that's fine. You can come to Him with anything. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your father. I mean, He's He wants a relationship with you, but at the same time, you know. His relationship with us is much more than a worldly relationship. There's much, um, 
much more personal. You know, that it's much more important than anything that we can have in this world. It's much more important than any relationship that we can have in this world. Um, you know, and it's like whenever we, um, whenever we pray and we're just like, well, I prayed for something because you said to, and, and I haven't gotten it yet. Well, what did you pray for? Well, I was praying for a new house. Um, well, yeah, I mean, maybe not. You, you, you might not have gotten that. <laughs> I've been praying for a new house, too. I still haven't got one either. But, um, you know, it's, um, part, of it, part of that is staying grounded in the Word. So, you know, so we do know how to pray in a way. Um, and so, and because when the Lord has a calling for a task, we want to be well, uh, well equipped for it spiritually as ambassadors for Christ. And then when He has a call on us to bring other people to God, He wants us to be equipped and ready. Um, and so we need to have, we need to really focus on our personal relationship with the Lord in those times. Um, all the time. The, the Lord has given us an opportunity and instruction on how to live a Christian life. Instead of asking Him to help us, He has already given us the instruction. So the question might be, are we listening and start, Are we listening and starting there before we come to the Father? You know, this is an instruction manual too. You know, we can, we can also go to this to get our answers. And um, too many times I feel like we fall short because we don't want to read this. I, I know I, I have. I'm pretty sure we all have and, um, many times. And this, is, this book is, is the most important book I've ever read in my life. And I love reading books. And this is by far the best and the most important book that I've ever read. And um, once you, as you get a personal relationship with the Lord and you build on that, I promise you everything that you read, you will just want to dive in deeper and deeper and deeper as you go along. But, um, you know, Second uh, Timothy 4 verse 2 says, oh. Preach the word and be ready in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. I mean, that's already happening. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch. Um, even studying for this and a few different sermons and that I was listening to, I could, I could hear it. And, you know, but the Lord does give us discernment in that so that we can know whenever we're hearing false teachings and stuff. And as we grow with the, with the relationship with the Lord, we can understand, we can hear that more, and me and you were, me and uh, Brother Jake were talking about that last night, and, and he kind of explained it to me in, in a pretty, in that way, and it was, I really, I really liked that, but, um, uh, let's see, you know, we need to be ready to do it, whether it's convenient or not, so we need to be ready to preach the word, and correct, and rebuke, and give sound doctrine, you know, with great patience, while we're teaching, because we all know that it can be frustrating teaching people sometimes. I, man, just having to slow down and wait for somebody, you know, whenever I'm on fire, and I'm just like, come on, let's go, just join on, and you know, grab my hand and just take off running and see if they fall down or not. <laughs> but, um, you know, and uh, it's, it's um, another thing is, is, you know, we, uh, like I was saying, this is our instruction, you know. <coughs> I have to get into those John Deere instruction manuals every now and then whenever one of our tractors breaks down. and I can guarantee you seven out of ten times I will not find my problem in that instruction manual. <laughs> but God's instruction manual for us will have the answer ten out of ten times. Every single time that you have a question, this word will have the answer. Um, if, we, um, if we lived our lives um, one page of the Bible one day at a time, we'd be in good shape, but we don't, because we're all sinners. But by the grace of God, He has unlocked the key for us to boldly approach the throne. Thank goodness. <laughs> but um, as Christians, when the Holy Spirit lays it on our heart to plant the seed, you know, sometimes we take our own interpretation of that as planting a fully mature plant. Um, we don't want to wait for that seed to grow and sprout and 
It's like whenever you were a kid in kindergarten and you would get, they give you the bean plant. You'd put the bean in there and then you'd watch it grow every single day. And oh, I get so mad. I'd be like, why hasn't why it come out yet? Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, but it's the same thing with with us. Sometimes we just have to be patient and wait for it to grow. Um, you know, a seed has to be watered and nurtured. Um, we want them to instantly sprout, and then we can't understand when they don't have the same fire as we have in us. We need to be less carnal oriented and more spiritually minded. We need to be still and listen to the Holy Spirit. If we do everything on our own timeline, we can easily push people away from taking that leap of faith and coming to Christ by pushing too hard or being too vocal, trying to control their growth, or trying to control their growth, and we forget to take a step back and be patient and let the Holy Spirit do its work. Um, as a farmer, I can tell you that too much water is, is just as bad on a seed as dry soil is to a seed, if not worse. Um, you know, if it rains really hard, really fast, um, that dirt will pack in around that seed and, and then it'll create a crust. And as it dries, that crust will turn into like a cement type of... Of thing and, and as that plant is trying to grow, that sprout is trying to grow and, and come up through, it can't because it's got that layer of concrete and, and if we don't run a rotary hoe through the field, we'll lose every single plant. But um, and it's this, and but if once we run that rotary hoe, hoe through, it can get through there. But um, it can be the same thing whenever we're dealing with humans is we can be, you know, we can overwater them way too much and then, you know, as they're getting up to the top, they just finally they just give out and they spoil because they can't they can't reach the top and sprout. Um, so, anyways, I lost my spot again. But um, we are. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, as ambassadors for Christ, we have to be mindful of this. We have to be careful sometimes whenever we're bringing somebody to Christ because we want to show everybody all the love that we can and we want to just shower them with God's love and, and God's goodness but we also have to be careful that we don't overwater them or in, in a way scare them away from it you know and push them away because you know a dry seed like I said a, a dry seed can almost be better than an overwatered seed because a dry seed is still just waiting on a rain to grow an overwatered seed well that could be somebody who we've already pushed away from Christ you know and and that's you know, that's why it's much worse. But anyways, um, so let the Holy Spirit guide you when you're ministering to others. Um, we can get ahead of God's will all too easy. God's will be done in His time, not ours. Be still and let God give you guidance and opportunity according to His plan. Um, it was Bishop Hugh Latimer who said, that a drop of rain made a hole in a stone, not by violence, but by continually falling. So we need patience and perseverance. That can be hard for us to do, but we have to remember that these are people's eternal life. That these are people's eternal life at stake. Um, um, God is patient. He is very stable. Patience can encourage our stability. Do we have patience like God? Instead of always reacting impatiently to others, we could act redemptively towards them with patience. You know, how about your spouse? How about your kids? Your boss? Those co-workers? Sinners and saints? Your preacher? How about the church? In an age where society demands everything be faster and now, the attribute of patience can be a challenge. While an age of instant copy and credit can meet a quick need, they do not satisfy long term. Patience gives stability to our lives and is a wonderful part of being spirit-filled. With that. <laughs>